Greater is the Holy Spirit that lives and resides on the inside of you than the devil that's in this world. You know, the Bible says that Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That means he can't devour everybody he comes up on. He has to find somebody that's willing to let him do it. Well, how do we do that? But not resisting him. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If he's not fleeing from you, it's because you're not resisting. I say, if he's not fleeing from you, it's because you're not resisting. I heard one brother say one time, well, I got the devil on the run. Only thing is, I'm running, he's chasing me. But you know, that's not the way it's supposed to be, folks. You turn that around. He ought to be running and you chasing him. Every time you get up in the morning, you ought to give him an acceptance three headache. He said he's up again. I better watch it. Better put up my guard because he's coming after me. And you've got to go after him, folks. You can't be passive with the things of God. God knows if you really mean what you're saying, what you're doing. And not only does God know, but the devil knows. So how do we resist the devil? By the word of God. You know, the Bible said, this is my favorite scripture, just in case you want to know. I'm getting a lot of sound out of something over here that's kind of hitting me in the ear. <laughs> you know? Amen. Those men will work on it, they'll fix it. So my favorite scripture, how many remember what it is? You mean after four times that I've been here and I've told you what my favorite scripture was and you still don't know what it is? John 1. (laughs) Sister Becky, she remembered. St. John, the first chapter and first verse says, In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Fourteenth verse says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. So if you want to know what God's will is about your life, then you need to know what the Word says about you. And a lot of people say, Well, I don't know what God's will is for me, what He wants me to do. Let me tell you what to do. Get into the Word. Spend time seeking God. And he will show you what his will is. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. And don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the new in your mind that you may be able to prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. You can know what God's will is, folks, if you get into his word. He will show you. You need to pray and ask God for wisdom. And for knowledge and understanding. James said, whoever asks for wisdom, God will give it to them. Amen? So if you're really serious about the things of God, then what you need to do is get into the Word and see what the Word of God says about you. You know, the Bible says that God has exalted His Word even above His name. And that His Word is forever settled in heaven. So what we have to do is get the Word settled in us. Get the word settled here on this earth. Get our minds renewed to the word of God. Get rid of that stinking thinking that we've heard that tells us that we are defeated. We're not defeated, folks. We are victorious. We're victorious over death, hell, and the grave because that's what Jesus did for us. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, look at Psalms 103. Now, Pastor Don asked me, Yesterday afternoon, said, what are you going to be preaching on tomorrow? I said, I don't know. Until I get there and get started. And I still don't know. But we will go with the flow. Amen? And I, I know this one thing. I believe it with all my heart that God wants his children healed. He's the beloved above all things. I wish you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So the key to that is getting your soul prospers. 
What does that mean? That means getting your mind renewed to the Word of God, to put off the old man and put on the new man, which are renewed in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God wants you healed. Look at somebody say, God wants you healed. He wants you healed more than you want to be healed. I said, God wants you healed more than you want to be healed. So what do you mean by that? Well, Jesus bore the stripes on his back for our healing. What more could he do? He gave his life for us. What more could he do than what he's already done? So he wants us healed. You know, Jesus, God the Father and Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit has provided everything that we need before he ever created us. Before he ever made us. They got together. They had a plan. Before the earth was even, before the foundations of the world, before the earth was even created, God provided everything that mankind would ever need before he ever made man. Everything we'd ever need, folks. What do we need? We need food. He provided it for us. We need raiment, clothes. He provided that for us. We need peace, joy, and happiness, blessings. He For us, through grace. Thank God for His grace. So faith, really what faith is, is reaching out and taking hold of and believing what God's already provided for us through grace. It's already been given to us. It's already ours. You know, the Bible says that by grace through faith are you saved, and not of works lest a man should boast. Grace has been provided, but we reach out by faith and take hold of it. Well, how do we do that? We do it by the law of faith. Well, what is the law of faith? Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth. Whatever you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you can have it. Amen? So that's how you're even born again, folks. That's how you're saved. It's believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for your sins, and God raised Him from the dead. You believe in your heart, confessing it with your mouth, and you shall be saved. Well, what does the word saved mean? It's salvation. Anything that you need, spirit, soul, or body, has already been provided for you through salvation. Well, how do you obtain it? How do you cause it to become reality in your life? By believing it in your heart, and confessing it with your mouth. How many believe that you're born again? Let me look. Let me look. Let me see if there's anybody back there that don't have their hand raised up. Pastor Don, I can tell you about it. How do you know that you're saved? You believe it in your heart, and you confess it with your mouth. You believe your sins are forgiven you because the Bible says so. Well, the same way that you have health and healing provided for you is believing it in your heart and confessing it with your mouth. How many of you ever woke up in the morning and you didn't feel like you were saved? And somebody may have told you, you didn't look like you're saved. But still, in your heart, you believe that you are. It's the same way where healing is concerned. You believe you got it, and you shall have it. A lot of people are wanting to see something before they ever believe, or feel something that they ever believe, or taste something 
before they ever believe. They're trying to rely on their five senses before they ever believe that they've got it. Well, you've got to believe you got it for you to have it. You don't believe it when you see it. You believe it and then you'll see it. You believe it and then you'll see it. You believe what? Believe what the Word of God says, not what you feel. You know, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by feelings. Amen? Our faith is in what? Our faith is in God. Who is God? God is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word's with God, and the Word was God. Say that with me. God is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word's still God. If you want to know how, what God thinks about you, get into the Word. See what He says in His Word. And then you begin to confess that. You begin to see yourself what the Word says you are. You see what you can do through what the Word says you can do. You see what you can have because of what the Word says you have. You see what you are because the Word says you are. Amen? Now are we the sons of God. Right now. Not wait until we get to heaven to be the sons of God. You've got to be the sons of God or you ain't going to heaven. Amen. So let's believe what the Word says. Believe when He says, by His stripes, you're healed. Did I tell you Roman, I mean, uh, Psalms 103? Well, I hadn't forgot it. I just wanted to make sure you all had. Psalms 103, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord. Everybody say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. And all that is written in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Now, while you're blessing the Lord, don't forget his benefits. I mean, know you have some benefits now as a child of God. Amen. God's given us something, folks, to help us through life. I thank God for heaven. I thank God we get to go to heaven. And we don't have to go to hell. I mean, it's glad you get to go to heaven and not hell. Some of you are not glad. We'll pray for you. But I'm glad that we get to go to heaven and not hell. But on our trip there, according to the word, we're going to face some trials and tests and temptations. It's going to be kind of rough on the way sometimes. How many has found that out? I remember... November 1977, I think it's the 23rd on Thursday night, about 9 o'clock. I said, Lord, I only live for you come hell or high water. So I've been born again. I had already been born again when I was young. But I walked away from God. I was doing my own thing. But this one particular day, Pastor Don was praying for me. My sister's church was praying for me. My first cousin's church was praying for me. Everybody that I knew was praying for me. And so I said, Lord, I want to live for you come hell or high water. And guess what? Hell and high water came. And there was times I said, now, Lord, I really don't want to, you know, sometimes I want, did I make the right decision? I didn't ask for this. But how many know that Jesus didn't ask to go to the cross? But he did. Why did he do it? He did it for us. Oh, how he loves you and me. Do you know God loves you? He's not mad at you. God's not mad at you. I don't care what you've done. 
God still loves you. You can't make Him love you any more or love you any less. He just flat out loves you. Amen. All He's asking is for you to love Him back. He just wants you to love Him back. How many love the Father this morning? Or to have everybody's hand up. We love you, Jesus. Have you told Him you love Him this morning? Say, I love you, Jesus. I appreciate what he's done for us. Don't you? So, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Number one, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, or thine sins. He forgave all of them. I said he forgave all of them. Every solitary one of them. Anything that you ever did, did, folks, anything that you've ever done, it's been forgiven. Your past is wiped clean. Amen? And everything that you do today, He's already paid for it. And everything you do tomorrow, He's already paid for it. That's too good to be true. That's the good news. That's the gospel. But believe it, folks. Believe it. Get rid of that condemnation that Satan tries to put on you. Anytime, you know, whenever I got saved, I got back in fellowship with the Lord. There was a battle. God didn't do nothing for you. You didn't get saved. You rascal. You think God forgive you for all those things you've done? I said, yeah, but uh, he said if I'd asked, he'd forgive me. And I asked, and I believe he forgave me. But you know, I didn't feel like it. There was still something that was bothering me. Because even though I was brought up in church, I don't remember... It was probably taught to us. It was probably preached to us. That if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He died for your sins, God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. And I heard this brother, this preacher one night, preaching on that. And he said that. And on the, side, on the inside of me, that's the answer. And I said, well, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for my sins, and that God raised Him from the dead. I believe that in my heart, and I confess it with my mouth. So the next time the devil came to me and said, you ain't got nothing. I said, let me read you something, Mr. Devil. <laughs> let me show you what the Word says. And so I read it to him. You've got to read it to the devil just in case. You know, Jesus had to speak to him. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. So he had to talk to him when well, you need to. So I'm not believing your stuff anymore, devil. I believed it for a long time. But I'm not believing it anymore. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am the workmanship. I'm God's workmanship created in the righteousness and true holiness. God created me in righteousness and true holiness. Everybody say true holiness. If ever the true holiness, there could be a false holiness. Have you thought about that? I know of a little church. I won't say where it's at. But I know of a little church. Here. They are true holiness. That's the name of the church. And what that means is women cannot wear makeup. Lord knows some of them need all the help they can get. <laughs> they can't cut their hair. They can't wear gold. 
Can't wear lipstick. That has absolutely nothing to do with being a child of God. I heard Brother Hagin say one time, this preacher came up to him, or this brother came up to him and said, Brother Hagin, when are you going to start preaching on beauty parlors? He said, Brother, I'm not. Well, you know that these women that wear all that makeup and stuff, they're not right. He said, Brother, let me tell you something. I pray that more of them use it and not less. <laughs> Amen? Well, how to get off on that? <laughs> let me get on something else here. I thank God for beauty parlors. I'll say that. <laughs> I think my wife looks good when she gets dressed up and, and fixed up and all that stuff. Amen. So forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, forgives all thy sins. Your past, your present, even your future sins. You know, sometimes we look at people and the things they've done in the past. I know one time, I'm going to tell on my sister since she's not here. They came to the church I was pastoring, her and her son. They came to do some praise and worship. And she got up and she said, I want to tell you something right now. So God sure did a change in my brother's life. Said he didn't just have the devil, he was the devil. <laughs> so I just sat there, she got through, and then I got up and I said, Sister, I thank you for those encouraging words, those upbuilding words. People didn't really need to know that. But you see, God had made a change in my life. And she recognized it, and everybody else in the family recognized it, I reckon. But you know something? I had to make a change. God makes a change in your heart and your spirit, but you've got to make a change in your soulless part of you and your body, your fleshly part of you. So you're brand new in your spirit. When you're born again, you all do know that you are a spirit. You have a soul and live in a body. You know that. And a part of you is born again, wall to wall, Holy Ghost, is your spirit. Your spirit. So by your spirit, you bring your flesh and your soul into subjection together. And you begin to get your soul and your spirit Agreeing together, what's ever any two shall agree on is touching on this earth. It shall be done for them and my Father which is in heaven. You get your spirit and your soul agreeing together, your flesh hasn't got to change. Amen. When you start agreeing, there's things you know in your spirit that you don't know in your head yet. Amen. Because what's in you is God. Christ in us. The hope of glory. God's in you. That's why we have to get our minds renewed to what the Word says. That's why we need to study the Word. So that the Holy Spirit can quicken it and make it alive to us. And when it comes alive to us, faith arises in your heart. And then whatever you ask for, what you believe for, it's going to come to pass. Amen. It will come to pass. So bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all His benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Isn't that great? Just the same way He forgives us of all our sins. Now just think about it just a second. He forgives you of all your sins. He heals you of all your diseases. Amen. 
When are your sins forgiven you? 2,000 years ago. Your sins were forgiven you when Jesus was nailed to the tree, to the cross. At the same time, your sickness and disease was taken care of. Amen. Over 2,000 years ago. Well, why aren't we walking in it then? You know, it's one thing to be healed, and it's another thing to walk in health. That's what I want. I want to walk in health. God's healed me of many things. And there's some things that I'm still believing God for. And it's coming. It's, praise God, this could be the day. <laughs> but I'm believing God for some healing because of some things that happened, some operation I had to have. And uh, as a result of that, it left me with my equilibrium, equal, or your balance. It left me kind of messed up in that. But thank God I'm a whole lot better off than I was. At least I can walk now. Amen? So I thank God for that. I remember when I was in the hospital and I had a problem. When, when I had the operation, they had put a tube down in there to suck all that stuff out of me. And they didn't get it down far enough and I aspirated. And I like to went home to be with the Lord. And I passed out or whatever. When I woke up, I was in ICU. And all these deaths, there was nothing sitting around me. I just laid out there in front of God and everybody. And I thought that I was right here at this church. And I was crying for dawn. I said, Donnie. Donnie! Donnie! I didn't see Donnie. This nurse came over to me. And she laid her hand on my shoulder. She said, Mr. Vest, do you know who you are? I said, sure I do. She says, where are you? I said, I'm in Salisbury at my brother Donnie's church. She said, okay, Brother Vess, or Mr. Vess. Okay. Just patted me on the shoulder. And the next thing I know, I was waking up somewhere else. I don't know why, but for, to me, it was as real as you all sitting out there right now. It was real to me. <laughs> but I knew who to call on. And I knew if my brother knew about it, he'd be praying for me. And you are so blessed. You are so blessed to have Pastor Don here. Like you said, I've known him all his life. And we had some hard times, but we've had some good times. Thank God He gave His life to the Lord. Begin to pray for me. And there's other prayers that we've prayed that haven't been answered just yet, but they will be. We have another brother in Australia. I know he was born again when he was just young. And I remember coming home from a meeting, a youth meeting that we had. He told mom and dad, he said, I was saved, sanctified, 
and filled with the Holy Ghost at that meeting. He was just young. I don't know how old he was at the time. But you know, some of the teaching that we had growing up, you get saved and then go through a process of being sanctified and get good enough to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you tarry for a while. And if it's God's will, He'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. Well, that's not so. You get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost at the same time. But you know, mom and dad didn't pay that any attention. You know why? Because of what they'd been taught. You can be taught wrong, folks. You can be taught wrong. And because he wasn't really encouraged to go on in that, he went the other way. But he still knows the truth. It's still in him. And we're just praying for it to come out of him. And believe in God for a great and mighty thing. I was with him one day there in Asheville. We stopped at a Hardy's to get a cup of coffee. And this gentleman was sitting outside. And we started in the door. He said, do you have enough money that I could get me a cup of coffee? Ron said, come on inside and we'll buy you breakfast. He said, no, I just want some coffee. Ron gave him a bill. I don't know what it was. We went on inside and then we sat there and we could see him sitting out there. And Ron said, I wonder what his life story is. I wonder where, he came, where he's coming from. I wonder what's happened to him, why he's out there begging on the streets. Compassion in his heart. So when we walked out the door, Ron walked over to him and handed him another bill. That guy looks up at him, looks at that bill. I don't know what it was, but it must have been a pretty good one. Because his eyes about to... <laughs> We walked off, and I said, Ron, you'd make a good pastor. He said, I know, because I love people. You know, that's what it takes. Loving God and loving people. Loving God and loving people. That's what he asked of us, folks. How much time I got? Did I get through? Well, I hadn't got started yet. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. You know, Brother James said in James 2 and 10, if we transgress in the least of these commandments, then we're guilty of all of them. Least of them. The least thing that we think is sin, if we transgress in it, then we're guilty of every one of them. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need Jesus. Because we can't make it on our own. It's impossible to live a Christian life without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That's what He's done for us. Things that we have need of, He's already Provide them for us. So don't forget his benefits. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now there's another message in that right there if I don't have time to, to preach it. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. You know, he came to set the oppressed free. He didn't come for the righteous sake, but for the unrighteous. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. 
I'm going to go ahead and just read through this because there's some good stuff down there you need to hear. And if I try to preach on each verse, we'll be here to 5 o'clock this sitting. And I know some of you already have plans to go some places and do some things. And I plan to get home to see my lovely wife as soon as I can. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Aren't you glad He's plenteous in mercy? We wouldn't be here today if He wasn't. He will not always chide, neither will He keep His anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins. He's not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, how far is the heaven above the earth? For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. His mercy is renewed day by day. Every, every day. And as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. What a powerful scripture. You know, you can start going east and keep going. Go around and around and around the world and you'll never catch up with west. I'm glad he didn't say as far as the North Pole is from the South Pole. Because that can be measured. So what he's done, he's removed our sins from us so far we can't even catch up with him. And if we can't catch up with him, he ain't going to catch up with him. So don't think about it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. My desire is to live for God, to be pleasing to Him. As far as the east is from the west, He's removed our transgressions for us like as a father pitteth his children, so the Lord pitteth them that fear Him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourished. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth all. Bless ye the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, and hearken to the voice of his word. There's a good message in that too. Bless ye the Lord, all your hosts, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all the places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. I encourage you to go through Psalms 103 and write down all these benefits. Take time to do it. Write them down. Then have the Holy Spirit to reveal to you exactly what He's done for you, what He's given you, what belongs to you right now. You know He says that He has healed all of our diseases. In Isaiah 53 and 4, that we did esteem Him stricken and smitten of God, but He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastised our peace that's upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on the tree that we've been dead to sin to live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. So if we are and we were, then we is. Amen. Praise God. You are healed in Jesus' name. All right, Pastor Don. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Praise God. I am blessed. 
And you know what Arnold says about my brother Ronnie? It's true. I, I, I wish he were watching by Facebook. And who knows, he may be. We never know. And, uh, but we're praying for him. And when my mother was on her deathbed the day before she passed, and I asked her that question, Mom, um, I want to pray for you, but when I've been here before, you always ask me to pray for your healing, but you haven't asked me for that. So I don't want to pray against your will. What do you want me to pray? And I said, if you want me to pray for you to go home, I'll do that. And she said, I'm tired, and I miss your daddy so much. It's been eight years or how long it was at that point. And I think about him every day. But she said, I'm, I'm concerned about my children and my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. I said to her, Mama, don't you worry about them. You pray prayers of faith, and those prayers are like incense going up before the, fa- the throne of yes. God. And then those prayers are the prayers you pray for all of your children. So you pray those prayers in faith, and I believe God has answered them. And so I'm confident, I am confident that, that everyone in our family will stand before God, not in judgment, but in righteousness because of yes. the blood of Jesus. I pray that for your family as well. I pray that for you. And we need to pray for our family and, and bless the Lord. You know, when, when, we, when we say, bless the Lord, O my soul, we bless the Lord, O my mind, my will, and my emotions. Everything that I am, I submit it to God and I bless the Lord. And, that, and as I preached a couple of weeks ago, that word bless means to bow down before him. To submit to the authority of God. So when we bless the Lord, it's more than just, you know, having a hoot and holler and having a good time. It's blessing God in you with everything you've got. Everything you've got. You're submitting it to the will of God. So where are you this morning in your walk with Christ? Where are you? Are you submitted to the will of God? And we know, you know, God's spirit bears witness with our spirit whether we are the children of God or not. And if God's spirit has not borne witness with your spirit, then you aren't. It's just clear. It's as plain and simple as it can possibly be. So if you have a question in your mind as to whether you know Jesus or not, if you haven't submitted your will to the Father, and if you don't have that witness inside of you, then I would not leave it to chance. I wouldn't leave it wondering. I would make certain. I would know for certain. And how do we know for sure. Here's the deal. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What is confession? Confession is just agreeing with God. It's to say the same thing God is saying. So if God is saying to you, you're saved, then we know it. We have a witness inside of us. So if you don't have that witness this morning, you can. You can. I just want to conclude this morning by giving you opportunity. If you have not made that connection with God, if you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life, now would be a good time to do that. I'd like for everyone to bow your head. Nobody looking around. It's Father's Day, I know, and I'm going to get you out of here in just a moment. But I would dare not leave this place. I would be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. So if you're here this morning and you haven't made that connection, and, and God is speaking to your heart, you know, the, no man comes to, the, to Jesus lest he's drawn by the Spirit of the Father. So if the Holy Spirit is touching your heart this morning, he's drawing you, and you sense something going on inside of you, and you haven't made that divine connection with God, I just want you to lift your hand for a moment because I want to pray for you. This is so important. This is the most important thing you could possibly ever do in your entire life because your eternity is banking on it. So if you haven't made Jesus Lord of your life and you want to this morning, would you just lift your hand? Because I want to pray for you. Well, praise the Lord. looks like everybody in here is ready to go. And that's an awesome thing. And I'm just thankful to God for that. So would you just stand to your feet and just give the Lord some thanks this morning. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, we thank you, Father. We bless you. We praise you, Lord God, that we have a father like you. You're a good, good father. And we praise you, Lord, and we thank you, Father, for all you have done for us. God, you are the beginning, you're the middle, and you're the end. And we thank you, Father, that our hope and our salvation is in you 
and it's in you alone. And we love you, Father. We trust you. And we thank you, Father, for our healing. We thank you, Lord God, that we have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. And we bless you. And we praise you. And we give you glory. And we give you honor in Jesus' name. Now give the Lord a good, I mean a good, hand clap of praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have you got a good father this morning? Amen. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. If your dad is not able to be here today. Okay, we have a little gift for you at the front door, men, on your way out. Would you pick it up and take it with you? We Make sure you get one. It's for you. It's free of charge. We want you to have it. So pick it up as you're leaving this morning. There will be someone there to give it to you. God bless you. We love you. Happy Father's Day. Have a wonderful day. Amen. You've been listening to Destiny City Church, a community of believers committed to helping others find and fulfill their God-given destiny. For more information, visit us online at destinycity.org.